Hey everybody, I'm Jess. And I'm Chris. Welcome back to the Garden of the Eternal Star. Today we're very excited to discuss a topic that might be on your mind considering the upcoming holiday, Valentine's Day, and with that, love magic. So before we get started, we wanted to put out a, a bit of a disclaimer of sorts and basically just say we're going to be talking about some quote-unquote love magic and some love spells, but it's important to note here we don't uh, suggest that you do any kind of magic that will affect another person's will or emotions or anything like that. Some people may practice that way and this isn't a, a soapbox where we're saying that they're wrong, but it's not how we practice. And so bear that in mind when we do give some examples of different spells that you can do. Our suggestion is never do any kind of spell or magic that's going to affect another person without their explicit consent and full understanding of what's going on and what's happening. Mm -hmm. Right. And also another thing to consider, um, even if you don't see it as the way that we do, um, with compulsion love magic, the energy that you send out to um, the other person, basically it competes in a battle of wills with them. Um, not many people out there are very likely to want to be told who to love or have feelings for. So even if you did decide to go and try to do it, uh, whatever your feelings are, um, just bear that in mind. Sometimes it comes down to a battle of wills. So this video won't be covering any way for you to magic someone into liking you or falling in love with you. But we are going to cover some other cool spells and rituals with the theme of love, so don't go away. Mm -hmm. So the first one we're going to talk about, uh, it's candle magic. Um, now whenever you're choosing colors for your candles when doing candle magic, it's important to consider color association. Uh, in the past, green actually was the color associated with love due to green being associated with Venus, who of course is the god of, goddess of love. Um, so around the 20th century, red and pink actually began to take center stage, and now you might get funny looks if you try to suggest a green candle in a love ritual or spell, but bear in mind that that used to be the common practice. The reason that we mentioned the whole thing about the color association goes back to some of our other videos. And it's all about the fact that when things were, are, have been practiced for an extended period of time, what you find is that they gain a resonance. Like there's a certain amount of energy that is imbued into that practice or those phrases or words. And so we just wanted to put that out there so that everyone had a little bit of an idea of the history. And there again, at the end of the day, you can use your intuition to choose what color works best for you in your mind. You know, if, if you read on a table somewhere that, you know, an association is one thing, but it really doesn't speak to you on, on an intuitive level, you might be better off choosing a color that works, that seems right for you. So, you know, make that association as you go through. Mm -hmm. So, along that vein, uh, when you're setting up a spell or a ritual for love with candles, you might choose red for passion, um, pink for like innocent love, white for maybe everlasting love or pure love, uh, green for traditional love, or I've even seen silver being suggested as a color candle for love. Um, all of these are associated with love, and you can even branch out further to a different color, like Chris said, if your intuition pulls you to it, if it feels right. Now when you're preparing to use candle magic in a love spell or a ritual, you've got a few options to choose from. You may want to simply carve a person's name into a candle if you want to do something like rekindle the passion in your relationship. There again, if you're going to do that, it's a good practice to let them know, you know what's going on. That way you're not doing secretive magic that's affecting their will. Mm -hmm. um, therein, if the other person is in agreement, um, and but you have some willing some difficulty with making the first move you could also use a love spell with a candle to do something like that mm -hmm. right 
Um, and another method, uh, if you don't have any specific person in mind or um, you just are wanting to have some new romance in your life, uh, you can use a come hither spell. Uh, in this, you're not going to carve anyone's name into a candle because this is basically like an open-ended question. The intent of the spell is simply to cast out your energy as sort of a beacon, acknowledging that if there is someone out there who likes you or is drawn to you, uh, that you would be willing to accept them. There's a small drawback here in that magic can be very straightforward sometimes. This spell that Jess was talking about is basically inviting a person who is drawn to you into your space, into your social circles. So the downside is you may not necessarily be drawn to them in return. So bear that in mind before you do a spell like that. Another thing to keep in mind here, a different approach that you might want to use if you're going to do this kind of spell. This is something that I can speak from my own personal experience um, that I have done and it works. You can create what they call a storyboard. Basically you take a piece of cardboard and you put images on it that represent the kind of person that you want to be with. Now in saying that you don't solely want to focus on the aesthetics of what they look like, how tall they are, the hair color, any of that. Those things are highly irrelevant and they're very variable. You can't control that easily with magic. But what you can do is send that energy into the storyboard Put up things that represent feelings that you want the other person to have, not just feelings for you, but their personality, what they're like. Um, and during meditation, you can stare at the storyboard and send your intent in it, and it works really fast. So that's something to keep in mind for a ritual. So no tall, dark, and handsome? Mm -mm. No, no, that won't work. And so the final spell or ritual that you can use love magic in is self-love. Um, I personally feel like self-love gets a bit overlooked around Valentine's Day. Everybody's more concerned with a relationship or um, hooking up with somebody. Uh, but definitely self-love is a form of love we could all use more often. Uh, with this kind of intent for your spell or ritual, you'll want to choose a candle that holds meaning for you personally. Um, it's important to hold in your mind the idea of feeling love for your own self. Uh, I'd specifically recommend a white candle because they represent healing, um, but again intuition is key here. You may also want blue for calm or uh, green if you are associating it with nature and the feelings that that might represent for you. And candle magic isn't the only kind of thing you can do to add a little love, you know, during this month. Self-love is just as important as companionship. Mm -hmm. You might choose to do some simple things, like you could draw yourself a ritual bath with rose petals, certain essential oils that you like, you know, things that make you feel loved and comfortable. Another idea is just spending the evening relaxing with a warm cup of tea and a good book. Things that put you in a very positive space, that's going to help you on your journey as far as that's concerned. Mm -hmm. So another kind of magic that you can also use around the holiday is spells. Um, I personally craft my own spells based on channeled messages and my own intuition, but there are source material spells out there that are associated with love as well. So you can do some research and take your time, um, and it, that can help you to be able to craft your own love magic spell to use for Valentine's Day. <laughs> Another thing to keep in mind is that spells are just like any other kind of magic that you practice. The art isn't an exact science, and your results are going to vary. Um, one thing that we would mention here, not associated specifically with love, but just spells in general, it's not a bad idea to keep a magical journal. That way you can look over the spells that you've written down that you've tried over an extended period of time and see what worked and what didn't and further refine your practice. So mm -hmm. something to keep in mind. Yeah. So on that note, I'll go ahead and share my own method for what worked for me. 
Um, just bear in mind that doesn't necessarily mean that your results from my practice will be the same as what I got. So when I began spellcrafting I started by uh, transitioning from writing poetry into channeling a um, into channeling a specifically strong message. So for a rekindling love spell, I might write out on paper something like, little ember burning bright, flicker flat, flicker fast, send out your light. Uh, love of old that once was hot, rekindle now and tarry not. Restore the passion that once desired, little ember burst forth to fire. There's several ways that you could then release the energy of that spell and the intent, like burning the paper, keeping in mind, you know, be careful with burning anything, take precautions where fire is concerned. Uh, you could simply leave the spell on your altar or in another personal space so that you just allow the energy to sort of saturate, you know, and release itself over time. Mm -hmm. uh, you could use a chant uh, during a ritual, um, especially one where you invoked a being that you associate with love, like for example Venus or Hathor. Mm -hmm. yep. So we've mentioned a few unique ways of celebrating Valentine's Day this year with a magic tradition uh, <coughs> without the need to sacrifice any goats or secretly elope. Haha. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We hope that you guys enjoyed our video. And uh, if you have any other tips or traditions to add, let us know in the comments down below. We'd love to hear from you about what you enjoyed or just even how you plan to spend your day. Also, don't forget our coupon code. This one is good for 20% off readings and ritual work and certain items on our website. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, you can check out our Facebook group that's linked in the descriptions below to keep up with our posts. We're aiming to build a magical community for discussion and trading ideas and practices. Um, we've also got a vetting process in place so that you guys can share your spiritual businesses with the group and grow alongside us. Well, that's all we have for this episode. Thank you for being with us. May Lucy's love and light guide you all.